finish up third down. The Cavs, they're on a roll. They beat Memphis last night for their ninth straight win. They got the best record in the NBA. They're clicking right now. Nine straight wins. Tim, can they keep it up? In the regular season, without question. And I'll tell you why. They finally figured out how to maximize Shaquille O'Neal's impact and, and the other guys they brought in. Jamari Moon, Anthony Parker, the new pieces, but primarily Shaquille O'Neal. When you look at this team, first five weeks of the season, they lost seven games. Shaq averaged 29 minutes a game in that stretch. Since that time, they've gone 24 and four. He has only played 28 minutes in tw the last 28 games, three times. What that tells you is Mike Brown understands now, Shaq plays about the first six, six seven minutes of the game. When he's on the court, they go to him. Set the tone early. We're going to play inside out. We're not going to shoot jumpers to start the game. We've got Shaq on the floor. Let's go to him. He starts him off right every single night. Mm -hmm. Then he takes most of the second quarter off, plays a few minutes before the half, mm -hmm. a few minutes in the third, and then he's back fresh for the fourth. That's been the rotation Mike Brown's been utilizing with this guy, and you can just see his rebound numbers are up. He's had 12 and 13 rebounds in the last two games because he feels fresher. When you leave Shaq on the court for 30-plus minutes, you expose your team so bad defensively, yep. and your <laughs> guards in particular, that you can't, what he does offensively does not offset it. When you, he'll give you the same production in 30 yep. that he'll give you in 22. So why expose your team to the problems he gives you defensively? Get him on the court for a shorter yep. period of time, a shorter spurts, and go to him when he's on the floor, and it's working right now. They're on pace to win 66 yep. games, and they're going to have the best that's, record. That's great yep. analysis. I think, well, I think, yeah, LeBron's going to do his thing throughout the game. You give it to the Diesel early, let him mm -hmm. go to work. I mean, nothing but positive is going to come out of it. He's going to draw doubles. He can kick it out to all the th shooters that they have, and you can go from there. I think, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a nucleus of things they've been doing right now that's working for them. They're going to continue to do it. Yeah, I, I agree on your regular season premise, but let's fast forward into <laughs> late April, May. <laughs> I, I just got to see LeBron figure out how to get his team over the Orlando hump or whoever it is that challenges them. Mm. Because late games, it's too much dribble, 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 one on five. And now he does have a, maybe a fading, but a superstar who is not going to like it if LeBron takes completely over at the end of the game and gets nobody else involved, right? That could be the best thing that's going to happen to LeBron James. It's the first time since he's been there mm -hmm. in Cleveland. He has a teammate with a strong enough personality yep. to say something at halftime in a timeout during a huddle about what this team is doing with the ball. LeBron's never had that before. If you look at this team over the last couple of years, by far the most predictable team in the NBA in tight situations in yep. the fourth quarter. And it cost them the Orlando Magic Series a year ago. You cannot come up the floor with a live dribble, six, seven, eight possessions in a row with one guy trying to go attack a good defensive team and try to beat them. And that's why he'll run into trouble against the Boston Celtics mm. if they're healthy, if they don't show some creativity with Listen their Listen to offense. this man. Oh, well, that's Wisdom. why he's an NBA analyst, and he's, he's our best right here on uh, ESPN, one of the best, of course. Jalen Rose. Is why you, why'd you say I'm, I'm just saying all this because, you know, Jalen. I just started boy, feeling good, and then yeah. you say, oh, and all those guys, you, you're the best right now. <laughs> all right, thanks. Uh, that's going to do it for third down. Coming up in the fourth, Chad Ochocinco, excuse me, boy, found the life of a reporter isn't so glamorous after all. What would Ken do if Ochocinco was firing questions at him, the OCNN? We'll ask the guys coming up next. But right now, let's send it over to Rish. <laughs> All right, time for fourth down, and Chad's feeling our pain. It's not as easy as it looks, man. So the Ocho Cinco Network news organization. <laughs> that is it. There it is. There it is. We, we're going to get Skip's opinion in just a second. But if you're at media day and Chad comes up and he's asking you questions, how, how are you reacting to him? Uh, Come on, be high. You, you see how everybody was laughing. I mean, it, it's you know what? He was asking serious questions, but. I mean, he's a funny guy. So, you, I mean, so you'd start, laugh, I, I right? would be, I would laugh for yeah. a while, but I would give him an answer. I mean, but I had to laugh. But I mean, you wouldn't give him, like, an inside answer, right? You'd give him just your usual. I'd give him a usual. I mean, I, I don't know how I could take him serious. I mean, but he was trying to be, he was trying to be serious, but it's, it's tough. It'll be tough. Mm. I would love it. I would love it if I saw a teammate, because you know how many mindless questions did you get? Uh, you know, to get a teammate, I'd call him three, four times in a row. Just would come, you? Come at me. I wouldn't necessarily give him anything that's going to be headlines, but right. I would at least give him the respect <laughs> to, to call him my teammate or a guy that I knew that played in the NBA. Sure, why not? Yeah, you, you know, I, trust me, I like Chad. I really do. We, we know. I, I felt sorry for him <laughs> because this was painfully hilarious to watch because, trust me, Chad, in his heart of hearts, truly believed 
that those guys were going to actually ask him up to the podium exactly. to sit by them, and he, he'd get exclusive scoops from Peyton and Dwight Freeney. He's saying to Dwight, Dwight, we played together for a long time. No, you haven't played with him for a long time. Keep oh. it real, really? Oh. So he's going to say it something to the, to the big media mob? Mm-hmm. That, uh, come on. It, it, and again, I, I appreciate th- this is revolutionary, what he's trying to do. But it ain't gonna work. How, how about security? The that was hurtful. Him? That I mean, was hurtful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Negative. That was like yeah. trying to get into the club, and it's like, no, you, you can't get it. Walk of shame. It was. I'm old. Didn't care. So you're not afraid for your your job right now? Is that what you're, uh, you're saying? You know, I think we're just fine. Because he's serious about this. You know, <laughs> I, I think I, I don't feel threatened at all somehow. All right. I think ESPN's going to figure survive. out how to get get through to you know get past yeah. the media and, and do what he needs. All I got to say to this is, please, child. Ooh. <laughs> Wrapping up. I, I, I don't care how we feel. I, I've got a feeling he's still going to continue to do it because Chad does, and I know he's watching right now. All right, that's going to wrap up uh, First and Ten for today. Great job as always. Great to have Ken Hamlin along.